let's take a look at the garden and I'm going to show you what I mean about weeds that just take over. But you'll also get to see some things that are doing well. So this here is our forest garden and yep right now it looks like a forest. Mainly it looks like a forest because of the weeds. <laughs> we have uh, an immense amount of ragweed that's growing in here as well as some pigweed. Um, but we also have some good things. So I'm going to point out some of the good things. This is one of my favorite places to be. Um, it's really developing nicely. I've gotten things planted slowly in here over the years. And of course, I'm still adding to it. And, you know, things are still growing. So there's, um, you know, this is not what it's obviously going to look like five years from now. It's going to be very different. But let's take a look. So I don't really remember what this might be, Rudbeckia. We've got uh, some pine berries that are planted in here, um, but the Bermuda grass takes over in here, and I haven't been able to keep that under control. So it's kind of trying to take over the pine berries, and uh, we'll see how that goes. But we've got some some annuals in here, like this tomato here and that tomato over there. We also have some bee balm, or this is. Uh, I don't remember. Somebody's going to have to remind me exactly what. Uh, anise hyssop, maybe. Um, and that's bee balm over here. We've got some ginger. But there's some ragweed right there. Here's violets right here. I think this is some kind of wild wandering Jew, and it will wander all over the place. Obviously here, Bermuda grass is taking over my walkway. Oh, like crazy. Here, that wandering Jew. Where these two posts are um, is oregano, so the wandering Jew has taken that over. I let this plantain go because it was so pretty here in the beginning, uh, but more wandering Jew. Over there we've got some Jerusalem artichokes. Yes, I know that they can be invasive, and if they get invasive, I'll just plow them over. Um, so I'm not really worried about it because all of this, these walking onions are also pretty invasive. They've grown from just being a couple of plants over here by that service berry to stretching all the way over here. And obviously, I think one of the dogs came in here and laid on top of it. We've got some uh, what's supposed to be peppermint in here, but I think it's just spearmint not doing what it's supposed to be doing. But my yarrow there is doing well, and I love it. Here we've got an apple tree. It looks like it's getting eaten up by some Japanese beetles, but that comes with the territory. The echinacea is blooming and beautiful. That's some huge tall weed right there in the background. And more weeds in here, although I have a stray zinnia here and there that receded itself. Pigweed, not my favorite at all. More ragweed. Here we have cardboard because I did plant a lot more oregano in here this year. You can see I've got wandering Jew popping up in there too. And some more zinnias and more, um, ooh, look, there's a tomato down there I need to pick. I see several that are ready for me to munch on. So maybe I can make a little crazy salad. Over here, we've got an apple tree with some true apples on it. This is our first year of growing any apples. So we're really excited about that. But in here, all the way over to that apple tree, all this is ragweed. Some of that wandering Jew, which is now starting to bloom, not a good thing, and a lot of chocolate mint. And that's why it really looks like a forest garden. Yikes. This here is taking off very slowly. That thing is like four years old. Um, and for the life of me, I can't remember what it's called. Uh, it's in the gooseberry family. It's like a cross between a gooseberry and a currant. Um, I, I, it, escapes my mind right now but um it still keeps living i have one more of them and i'm hoping that eventually one day they're going to give us some fruit <laughs> might take them a while but hopefully we'll get there more apples this here is a um gumi this here is a gumi uh gumi berry bush i guess it does get some thorns but it should produce some good fruit and more apple tree over there can't get very up close to this because of the weed craziness but we do have a fig tree right here um and i do see at least one fig on it 
and that's the first time a fig has overwintered and survived here. So I'm really excited um, because generally my experience, at least with figs, is once they start surviving the winter, if you can get them that far, then they'll be fine after that. Blackberries on this trellis here, and there's some raspberries on this trellis, but they haven't really come up and, and done very well, so we'll wait and see. Comfrey, lots of that spread all over the place. If you can see amongst all these weeds on the other side, that is a pawpaw tree. So again, that's several years old, but it's really starting to do well. And hopefully in the not too distant future, we'll get some pawpaws. This here is part of our old garden that we did not get uh, covered in plastic. Um, mainly because we already had things planted here. We, uh, in here, inside this tunnel, I had um, garlic, so I've already harvested that. But we've got beans growing in there now, and obviously more weeds. Got a blueberry bush here that's actually doing well. Ooh, even with the blueberry on here that I can pick. One of these days, I hope we have enough blueberries for our family. Oh, that was actually still a little sour. Not as sweet as some of the ones that we picked so far, but anyway, good. And one of these days, we'll, we'll have a good blueberry crop, I hope. And here we have a lot more ragweed as well as some cabbages and beans planted on that trellis too. Beans on this trellis, already showed you that. Here's a blueberry plant that's not doing so well. Despite the fact that we put in this irrigation system here, I don't think we set it up well so that that blueberry would be would get a lot of water. So it's um, not doing so great, but hopefully the rain that we had yesterday will help it and hopefully it'll survive for next year. Keeping my fingers crossed. But this is the garden that we laid all of the uh, weed fabric on. As you can see, we still have ragweed all over the outside of this garden. It's a constant battle and trying to keep it uh, mowed has also been a constant battle because we've had lawnmower problems and um, needless to say, it's just, it's one thing after another. So, um, yep, we're, we're already losing the battle here with the ragweed. But here we have our cucumber trellis. I picked um, five and a half pounds of cucumbers off of here yesterday and got those pickled and um, into the kids favorite which is uh, bread and butter pickles and I made a keto version of that so um, I'm planning to be eating those because it doesn't have all the um, sugar in it. In here we have uh, raspberries. That raspberry didn't make it. This raspberry here is looking good. Those raspberries there look like they need more water. And there's more raspberries in all of this jungle. Sometimes it gets hard for me just, just looking at this because it's all so overwhelming. And it's hard knowing how much work you put into some of this, you know, to get things planted and doing well. And then, and sometimes even to be mulched and just watch it all go crazy once the growing season starts. Uh, and I don't mean go crazy in a good way. It goes crazy with these weeds and it's just it's impossible to keep up with. So it, it gets to be very disheartening at times. But here we have more beans. There's an apple tree. So that was one of those areas that we didn't put weed fabric around because I have some onions planted in there. And I think there's a goji berry bush and maybe some gummies or something like that. But it, you know, it just got taken over again. Gummy here and more echinacea. echinacea. Um, we, this is where our potatoes were. They were so engulfed by the ragweed that we finally just made the decision to completely pull it up and lay plastic down and I guess try again next year. I don't know if we really can um, plant potatoes with weed fabric down. I'm gonna have to look into this. I don't know. At least it's been covered with the weed barrier so that we don't have more weeds coming up. More ginger and some purple cauliflower there is what this is supposed to be and broccoli with beans on a trellis more broccoli down there at the end 
stuff here that got planted but was never uh, this was red orac spinach or orac i'm not sure how to pronounce it charlie missed getting um the um the drip lines to that spinach so we lost it maybe next year these are the peppers and boy i would have thought after rain last night and that was the best rain I've seen in quite a while, that they'd be looking better, but they're looking kind of droopy. And some of that can definitely be because um, maybe they got too much rain. Or maybe, yeah, I don't think the watering system got turned off for this morning, so it's possible that um, not only did they get too much water from the rain, but they got then they got watered too. Anyway, um, these are all peppers, four rows of them. As you can see, we getting some bells here. Over there, we got a banana pepper, a couple more banana peppers there. The tomatoes are starting to look crazy. I got to get in there tonight and take care of all that because going out of town for a week means that um, <laughs> if I don't take care of them, it's going to be really bad by the time I get back. But we still have weeds. Um, this, this, of course, is a zillion times better. And we still do have problems with things like pigweed here popping up in the holes. I've definitely picked some morning glory. Oh, yep, here's some morning glory still popping up right here. So we definitely try to walk through here periodically and um, make sure that uh, most of the weeds are pulled so that it doesn't, the, you know, the plants can survive the weed pressure. But it's a chore. The corn over there is starting to tassel and so... Oh my gosh, best stand of corn we've had in years. I'm really excited about the corn. Let's go take a look at it. The one thing we didn't do when we put this in uh, was we didn't put a pathway down the middle of the trellis for the tomatoes. So that means you have to walk all the way down to the end of the garden to be able to get around. Here I do have some of the red Malabar spinach coming up. Not very many of those survived, unfortunately, because this was all planted in red Malabar spinach. But we've got two looking good. And I see one little one right here coming up. Right there. So that'll definitely produce some good uh, greens for us. We have two huge rows. The, I think the garden is 50 feet in width in this area. So two huge rows of tomatoes here. And we have a whole nother garden that was an older garden that we haven't used in a couple of years over on the other side of the property that um, is full of tomatoes too. So, um, yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully we get lots of good tomatoes this year. And I, I'm not the tomato whisperer at all. I can do all kinds of things with cucumbers and we can, we usually can grow cucumbers without any problem, but the tomatoes, um, typically our bug pressure is so bad that the ones that survive for us to pick I usually have to pick a little early and when I'm when they're ripening on the counter they really just basically rot before they're ripened so that's always a disappointment here we have cucumbers and cantaloupe pigweed and ragweed so those are all starting to bloom a little looking pretty good that one not so good though and it looks like a lot over here didn't survive so I had lots of squash plants in here, but we're down to two. I'm not 100% convinced that our, our watering is working great in here. I have a hard time pulling myself out of bed at five o'clock to come out here and check it. So that's the biggest problem. Anyway, another apple tree here. And all these flowering things here are marshmallow. And it's starting to thunder and we're getting black storm clouds, which I'm certainly not complaining about because rain is good. Um, so you can see some of this corn is kind of laying down, probably because of that storm we had yesterday. Um, but this is a, a corn patch that we planted a couple of weeks later. And I'm trying to see if I see, oh yeah, there's a little bit. We did a little bit of interplanting. I tried to, where corn didn't come up in these holes, we tried to plant some seeds for some squashes and such to come up. Evidently, they didn't all come up. Oh, and I see my favorite morning glory over there. I got to take care of that. Um, but some did come up. So there's one there, and one there, and one there. 
but this morning glory has got to go because it's already vining all over the place see that there that is morning glory and last year that stuff completely engulfed our corn to the point of not being you couldn't even see the corn it was uh, all pulled down by the morning glory and um, it's just not a weed that I'm interested in at all so I'm gonna pull that out all right goodbye to that nasty weed this is another vining weed that we have here that is very difficult to get rid of because of its root system Yeah, it looks like we completely lost that one. It broke. Over here, we've got more pumpkins and, you know, winter squashes and such. So, starting to vine. And, yeah, you can see everybody's favorite squash bug see um, eggs on there. And, no, I do not get out here every day to pick squash bug eggs off. Um, it's, for me, it's just, it's not a possibility. Um, I have too many, uh, too much other things going on with trying to process the food and stuff like that. And um, depending on the variety of plant, um, some of our varieties definitely seem to withstand some of the the squash bug pressure. And so we definitely we try to plant varieties that can withstand it. And uh, it looks like those varieties are doing great right now over there in that blank area. We got that all covered, but we ran out of um, drip tape and stuff. So just decided that we're not gonna plant anything right there. And then maybe later in the summer, um, we can start planting our fall garden there. I don't know how well you can see this, but over here on the sides, we've got morning glory popping up here, down there at the end. Um, this poor apple tree. We'll get completely engulfed by the morning glory. Whoa, there's a hole there. And the ragweed. <sighs> that blueberry's getting taken over by it right now, too. So, things are looking a lot better this year. Um, I still have a hard time because it doesn't look perfect. Uh, and that's me. I'm a perfectionist. Um, but God gave me a garden and a life and a family and certainly myself who are not perfect and so it's something that is a weakness of mine that I'm constantly looking to him to our Lord and Savior to help me overcome so this is one of his ways of doing it so that is our uh, garden tour for the middle of June and I'm gonna have to get out here like I said and do a little bit of weeding but you know it's manageable weeding and if we get a lawnmower running along here that'll be manageable too so hopefully that'll happen tonight and um we'll wait and see what tomorrow brings but it will bring vacation no matter what because my kids are not going to let me stay here to work on the garden instead of going on vacation no anyway have a great day guys and stay tuned for our next update, I guess, on what's going on at Kidding Around Farm. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe below. Take care, everybody.